Great. So I want to talk about some work we've done that is actually moving all of this science to the clinic and tr developing drugs that are aimed at improving the function of the aging immune system so that older adults have fewer respiratory tract infections and get less sick from respiratory tract infections such as COVID-19. So the molecule that, or the protein complex that we are focusing on is a protein complex called TORC1. And this is a very interesting complex because if you inhibit the activity of TORC1 in every species study to date, yeast, worms, flies, and mice, lifespan is extended, suggesting that the activity of TORC1 plays a fundamental role in aging. And these organisms not only live longer, they stay healthier longer, suggesting that there's improvements in the function of aging organ systems when the activity of this protein complex is inhibited. So if you look at what aging organ systems improve in response to inhibiting TORC1, the function of some but not all organ systems improve. So the function of the brain improves, the function of the heart improves, physical activity improves in older animals given TORC1 inhibitors, and most important for us today is immune function improves. So when we decided to look at whether TORC1 inhibition has impacts, beneficial impacts on aging in humans, we decided to first see can we improve the function of the aging immune system and thereby decrease respiratory tract infection rates in older people. And we're also doing some studies in Parkinson's disease to see if we can improve neurologic function. But I'm gonna to focus today on the data we've generated for improving immune function. So we did an initial phase 2A trial in 264 relatively healthy elderly. And we used a TORC1 inhibitor that's called RTB101. And we used very low doses of them, this inhibitor that were well tolerated. And what we found was that people who took RTB101 had a 42% reduction in their rate of self-reported uh, respiratory tract infections. And of interest, their antiviral defense systems, the expression of the genes involved in antiviral defenses were upregulated. We then did a second phase 2B trial, and now this time we switched our patient population to patients who are at high risk of getting sick from respiratory tract infections. And in this high risk population, we saw a 30.6% reduction in the percent of patients who had laboratory confirmed respiratory tract infections as compared to people who were treated with placebo. And we saw an even greater treatment effect, a 52% reduction in the percent of people who had severe symptoms when they had respiratory tract infections and a five day reduction in the time to alleviation of moderate to severe symptoms due to laboratory confirmed respiratory tract infections, which is the endpoint that the FDA looks, uh, examines for antiviral drugs. And again, this was well tolerated. So the question is why were these elderly people having fewer respiratory tract infections? And in that phase to be trial, we looked at the expression of genes that our innate immune system makes to fight off all sorts of different respiratory viruses. And these lines show on the left, the increase in the expression of these genes in people treated with placebo, and on the right, the increase in people treated with RTB101. And you can see in general, these antiviral genes are upregulated in people who are given RTB101. So what do all these genes do? Well, this picture is a diagram of a typical replicative cycle of a virus like coronavirus in a cell. So it enters the cell and then it replicates its internal constituents and then it packages itself back up and exit the cell. And in green, in these green rectangles are all the genes whose expression is upregulated in older adults given RTB101. And you can see they fight up many different steps in that the virus needs to replicate. And these genes that it is inhibiting, or is, I'm sorry, it's upregulating, 
are involved in the replication of all sorts of different respiratory viruses, including COVID-19. So here are, is a graph of the actual viruses that caused respiratory tract infections in people treated with placebo in gray and people treated with RTB 101 in blue. And you can see the incidence of multiple different respiratory viruses was inhibited as you'd expect from a drug that upregulates pan antiviral gene expression. And this includes coronavirus. Now, at the time of this trial, COVID-19 was not circulating in the population, so these coronaviruses weren't COVID-19, but it gives some hope that we actually have drugs available now that may prevent COVID-19 and perhaps other respiratory tract infections in our vulnerable, older patient population. So when you're developing drugs to inhibit, to prevent COVID-19 or other respiratory tract infections, it's important that they're well tolerated. The good news is if you look at the adverse events, those are AEs of moderate or severe severity or the serious, which are the worst adverse events, they were very similar between people who had the active drug RTB 101 and placebo. If anything, they might have been a little bit higher in placebo because people were having fewer respiratory tract infections. So in conclusion, in preclinical species, TORC1 inhibition has been shown to improve the function of multiple aging organ systems, including the immune system. In randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trials in almost 2,000 older adults now, we've completed testing and determined that TORC1 inhibition with RTB 101 improves immune function. I should add, we did have a phase three trial where we've only um, reported top-line results. That trial, we had to change our endpoints at the request of the FDA. The FDA wanted us to, de to see if we could just decrease respiratory symptoms irrespective of whether they were due to an infection. Our drug does not just reduce respiratory symptoms. It looks from the data that it's really more focused at decreasing symptoms due to laboratory confirmed infections. But we know from a phase 2B trial, RTB 101, 10 milligram once daily was observed to be well tolerated, upregulate antiviral gene expression, and reduce the incidence of laboratory confirmed respiratory tract infections caused by multiple viruses, including coronavirus in older adults. And so this raises the possibility that RTB has the potential to decrease the severity of COVID 19 infections in adults over the age of 65. And we just need to test this in randomized placebo-controlled trials, and I'll end there.